Good afternoon, everybody. We hope you all had a great lunch. Everybody okay? Yes. All right, cool. All right. Uh, so welcome to this session around uh, OWASP SAM. Uh, Sam, uh, as you might uh, have ha know, is one of the flagship projects of, of OWASP. Has been around for a long time. Uh, first models have been uh, defined in 2008, 2009. Uh, so, and we see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uptake and, and uh, interest in the model. So, thanks all for joining this session. The idea for the session is that we're going to give you an introduction to Sam, depending on, on what's your mileage. Uh, and we, the idea is also that we're going to uh, give you some updates on the, the things that we've been working on uh, with, uh, with the Sam core team, which is just to make sure not only the two of us, but there's an entire team working on this. Um, and, and so we'll, we wanted to give you a, a few updates on, on where we are with the project and what are we working on. So maybe first of all, quick show of hands. Who is not familiar with, with Sam, uh, the Sam project? Okay, about kind of half in the room, half the room, perfect. Uh, who, has, uh, who has heard of, of uh, some project before, who has read it, but who has not used it before? Okay, okay. And so the, the, the people that used it already? Okay, that's, uh, okay, okay, perfect. Okay, that gives us an idea on, um, on, on where we want to, want to put the focus in the, uh, around the presentation. Uh, the idea is to have an interactive session. So by any chance, we'll be doing quite some talking, but by, in, in, by any means, if you have a question or, or want to put a reaction or so, don't hesitate. We can definitely have this session interactive, right? So quick word about us. So I'm Bart Wien, uh, working for PwC since a uh, yeah, long time already. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm uh, already active in the, in the area for around 25 years or so have been really passionate about application security and have been from the beginning with uh, OWASP SAM uh, model as uh, co-leaders together with, uh, with Sebastian. And Sebastian. Okay, so let's, yes, thank you. All right, thank you, Bart. So, and uh, incidentally, we're both from Belgium, but that is really by coincidence, but it must be uh, our beer, uh, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm uh, also based, based in Belgium, uh, so, um, Professionally, I'm the founder uh, and still CTO of uh, a company called Torion in Belgium. Um, we also have a training company. Um, besides that, as a volunteer, I've been active within OWASP for the last 25 years nearly, which feels very long <laughs> and a little bit older now. Um, and then, indeed, uh, one of the co-leaders co of the SAM project. So we'll be doing a SAM recap. Uh, we'll also be covering mappings. Uh, you see that there's a lot of um, interest in using some to measure where you are and, and, and demonstrate what you're doing in terms of AppSec, but also how do you then relate it to, to NIST, to ISO, to, to other reference uh, frameworks and so on. So that we'll be covering. We'll be covering the benchmark and then uh, we'll definitely have quite some resources that we're continuously working on to, uh, to improve them. So first of all, some recap. So if you already know some, you have five minutes, you have a five minute nap. Uh, if uh, you're new to some, pay attention. So software assurance maturity model, that's what it stands for. And uh, I would say the elevator pitch is with some, you can actually measure your AppSec activities and how you're building that into your product or software lifecycle. And once you can measure it, you can improve it. And that's really why, why SAM is taking off and why SAM is really useful. In itself, uh, it's also quite actionable. It describes the different activities within SAM really clear and it provides you with an objective for how to do this and how to measure your activity in itself. The, the model itself is a generic model in the sense that it's, you can apply this on all kinds of and types of software on SaaS, on premise, on embedded devices, on cloud, on mobile. If you're doing waterfall, if you're doing DevOps or anything in between, you can apply some. Now, how does it look like? What's the structure of the model? The model is structured around five business functions. And I'll, I'll show you what these are, but that's the kind of activities that you can map on your organization. Yes. Now, in, this, in these business functions, we have five security practices. Well, we have, actually, we have five business functions, and in each of these business functions, we have three security practices. 
And within those security practices, we have two streams, A and B. And don't ask me why they're called A and B. That's just uh, to make a distinction between the two. More importantly, what you'll see in those two streams is you'll have a clear description of the activities that are related to each other. Right? For instance, like doing security testing in a very basic mode would be level one. Doing it more advanced is a level two. And providing feedback into your life cycle is a level three activity. So there is an increasing level of maturity in a stream of activities, yes. So how does the model look like? This is some. Right? So if you, this is everything there is in some. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, but obviously, if you're a first time, I would say user can be a little bit uh, of a steep learning curve. So we have governance, design, implementation, verification, operations as the business functions. And in each of these five business functions, we have security practices. I'm not going to explain them all. There's lots of material out there that will explain how that works. But one of them is security practice. So it's, the, um, it's the, one of the security practices is this one the requirements-driven testing. And as an example, how does that look like? We have the two streams. So it's a control verification stream. So are you building in security in the way you should be doing it in your software? And then you have also a misuse abuse testing. So can we like break the application in one way or another? And then, and then you have the lead three levels of maturity where you have the, dif the different activities that are being described. And so that, and that's... That's how the model works. And so the 15 security practices are structured in exactly the same way. So that's all good and well, but how do we measure this? And so it's a maturity model. How do you do an assessment? So if we're looking at the same security practice and we're looking at the first activity in control verification, it's very basic. You just have to make sure that in terms of security controls that we have in an application like authentication or Access control, does that work as designed? And does that, uh, is, that, is that good? And the way some works and the way you do a measurement is by through a questionnaire. You can also do this, uh, we have all kinds of guidance how to do this with interviews and so on and with tools. But basically, one activity maps on one question. And a question in general, like, are you doing this activity? And we answer this not only like in terms of coverage in a quantitative way, but also really important within some, we also want to know for sure that you're achieving your objective, that you're also covering the quality aspects of that particular um, activity. So we cover coverage, we cover quality. So in this case, do you test the application for correct functioning of standard security controls? There's a quality criteria that are numbering, like that really clearly explaining what these controls are. And also there is a criteria that whenever you change something in terms of security, you should retest it, uh, which is quite straightforward. And then if those quality criteria apply, you can say, yeah, we do this. We do this for some of them, at least half of them and most of them. So it's also a granular response. So in this, actually, this kind of questionnaire is the way you measure each of these activities, the streams and security practice, and then you can come up with a maturity level. Level is between zero, not doing it, and three, which is the highest. Okay. So that was like the five-minute introduction to some. With that. Any questions on the model? Is, uh, just a clicker, thank you. Any questions on the model? Is that clear? Yeah? So we're using, yeah, there's a question in the back. Next one? Yeah, in general, these are all activities where we, as a, as a core team, uh, think they are important uh, in terms of uh, activities that you should be thinking about, that you should be executing in, in your organization to build and to test and to, to, deploy, to deploy secure software. In this case, there is a, there is a, uh, a distinction between control verification, which is kind of the positive testing, making sure that whatever you want to achieve in your software is there and works, like authentication, like authorization, while misuse, misuse abuse case testing is more like how can I abuse the system. 
which are two different goals that you want to achieve. And that for us made it logical as a team to, to define two different activities for that. Okay, makes sense? All right. Any other questions on the model? Is it clear what the model, uh, what it, what it's, what it's, uh, yes? Okay. Yeah. No. It's about, it's, a, it's, it's, it's about processes, but it also includes elements of people. It includes elements of technology, because if you would be looking at activities, so there is, for instance, here at the, the lower bottom, Education and guidance, we are we having activities on training and awareness, organization and culture, and there the focus is more, the target is more people. The same holds for technology. We have, for instance, in security architecture, for instance, technology management. There would be a focus on uh, what, what is the technology that you're using to build the application and so on and so forth, and is the technology secure enough. But the focus of SAM is, is really on the process and the organization and the capabilities that you put in place in the organization rather than on the application software itself, on the product itself. Okay? Okay? All good? Perfect. Okay. Um, so we have a model. The model is fully open source. We're at OWASP. Everything is open source. And as Seba already mentioned, the, we, we just explained the core uh, model. Uh, but there's a lot of information out there that explains basically what are all, all these activities, what is there, how can you test. That's all covered on the website. We have PDFs. We have a lot of resources. We'll come back to that later. Uh, that give you a lot more information how you can use that model to test, to build also maybe a roadmap, a strategy in your organization to actually improve, move forward. Right. Um, one of the, the, the two topics that we wanted to put more, uh, more in the spotlight today is mappings. And why is that? Actually, more and more, I will see a lot of up uptake of uh, the OWASP SAM project by a lot of companies worldwide. We see a lot of interest in the, in the project and a lot of companies being used, but, but uh, using the model. But quite often we get the question, okay, that's also, that's all fine, but I need to be in line with ISO 27000 or my organization needs to comply with NIST CSF or, or whatever standard you have, uh, you have in mind or, or might be applicable to your organization. This is exactly the reason why we uh, develop these mappings. Mappings is really to make sure that you can actually use the, PRAM, the, so, the SAM project to build for yourself a strategy in your organization, to have a strategy in place for secure software, but also to make sure that you can use it as a, as a, as a tool to um, to, uh, to, to, for compliance. So as a company, if you have to comply with ISO 27000, we have built mappings that actually um, make, the, make clear the relations between the SAM model and the particular model that you have in mind for your, for your organization. And that's actually the idea of the, of the mappings that we have for SAM. Now, in the past, we have created... Uh, we have followed a different strategy than we are using today. In the past, we've created a lot of one-to-one -one mappings, meaning that we have standard XYZ, we have OWASP SAM, and we created always a particular mapping for mapping uh, SAM to standard XYZ, right? We're still, we're still doing that for particular standards, like for NIST uh, or for IEC uh, 62443, that's a standard on IoT. Uh, we still have developing uh, uh, very uh, concrete mappings, but on the other hand, we've uh, also chosen to follow a strategy to actually leverage OpenCRE. And OpenCRE already has been explained before. Um, um, in, I don't know if, if, if you're familiar with OpenCRE as a project. Yes, I see, I see quite some nodding. All right. But it's basically a, an, an OWASP project that actually maps the different standards that are relevant in cyber or in application security together. And what we have done... Uh, we have actually created a mapping between SAM and, and OpenCRE to make sure that if you're using SAM in your organization and you have to implement uh, uh, regulation XYZ, you can actually use the mapping from SAM uh, towards OpenCRE and then find out, okay, I have to comply with CRA, for instance, or CRE in the uh, in European Union. Um, if, I, if I am using SAM and this is the activities that I'm doing, then actually I'm covering already 80% by SAM, but there's maybe 20% of the CRE standard that I'm missing, and that is actually kind of the information that you can find out. This is, act this is really the reason why we're having these, SAM these mappings in place, and we're actually spending quite some effort to make sure that you, as an organization, 
when you're using SAM, because SAM is really for software security, you can also link it back to the reg regulations that you have to comply with. All right? Some examples here. Um, yeah. So uh, we, have, we have the mappings uh, on, our, on our website. You can, you can find them out uh, over there. You can have more details there. We also have, uh, we are, we are writing on our website from time to time uh, blog post, of course. Uh, and one interesting one, for instance, is we, we did a write-up on how, for instance, SAM and ISO link, map together, link together, and how they complement each other. So we do a full write-up on explaining, okay, why would it make sense to combine SAM and ISO, for instance, for your organization? Uh, some examples. This is what uh, one of the mappings look like. Uh, it doesn't make sense to look at the details here. You can find them, uh, you can find them uh, on, our, on our website. Eh? Um, but this really maps out all the different practices of NIST SSDF, the different activities there, and it maps them to all the SAM activities, and it will tell you, okay, with activity XYZ in uh, SAM, we have full coverage of an activity in NIST SSDF, or partial coverage, or no coverage, or more than coverage, and so on and so forth, and the full details are there. Again, which will allow you to really understand very well when I'm using SAM and I'm at a particular maturity level, this is what my coverage will be for standard X, XYZ. Okay? All clear? Um, we are also have been working on a NIST CSF uh, mapping. If I'm not mistaken, this one is not yet available. It's, it's not yet on the public share, yeah. so it's, it's uh, the draft, but we've... I, CSF is, is a higher, like a higher level uh, framework, uh, but we've gotten so many requests that we've, right, we've created that mapping and, and right, we've released it already uh, in, in the community call, uh, but yeah, indeed, it's, uh, it's available. Yeah. yeah. But so, particular mappings are very uh, specific one-to-one, -one, and in general the strategy is to link uh, to OpenCRE. Uh, OpenCRE, how does that work? If you, uh, from SAM, Actually, from every activity in SAM, we're actually mapping map back to C open CRE. So you will find out if I'm doing requirements. Uh, this is the one from uh, threat modeling. From threat modeling, yes. for instance, yeah. indeed. Yeah. If I'm doing um, if I'm doing threat modeling activity, uh, threat modeling in SAM, is it will link back to particular activity in open CRE, where you will then be able to find back the link to other uh, standards like ASVS like the DSOM maturity model, NIST, uh, NIST SSDF, and so on and so forth. Uh, that information is all, uh, you can find that back in OpenCRE. There's a website from there, and we provide a link towards OpenCRE, and OpenCRE also links back to Open, OWASP SAM, just to make sure that, that uh, the, the linking is fully clear. All right, and I think that uh, concludes uh, this part. Any questions on the mapping? Any, any questions there? Especially important if, if you need to demonstrate this to stakeholders and then uh, only yeah, just have to only implement some and then you can like explain all kinds of questions related to that. All right. Once you have that, what we came across over the last 10 years as the most asked question, so we have measured how, how we are doing in terms of secure development, but how do we compare with others? Do you like have like a benchmark? Eh? For instance, the... Um, and, and that's actually what we have. So this was released two weeks ago. So if you haven't seen it, so it's, this is the first time. Uh, we do have an initial pre-release or first set of the benchmark that we, uh, that we have. Now, we're nearly, uh, we're definitely not finished yet. Uh, so if you are working on some or if you're considering some and doing assessments, Please donate them because everyone wants a benchmark, but nobody wants to donate data sets. Yes. Um, now, be aware. So this donation of data sets is fully anonymized. Uh, it's fully explained how that works. Uh, so there's different ways to do this. So there's no excuse not to do it um, unless your legal department maybe throws themselves before it. But even there, uh, we, uh, we can and help you if you want, uh, if you want to do this. So uh, without further ado, uh, what do we have? So we have an initial data set uh, of 25 um, 
measurements from various organizations from all over the world. And so it's a, it's a nice spread. So we, we, we have like uh, global North American, Europeans, and even Asia Pacific and Latin American data sets. Most of the donations in the, in the current set are actually third party assessors that have measured it, which provides us with a higher, somewhat higher assurance in terms of like, okay, what's the quality of the, uh, of the benchmark? Industry-wise, there's a good spread. And also, in terms of company size, we have a considerable part of small organizations. Now, small organizations in OWASP Sam is less than 100 developers. Um, and a little bit like medium. And then majority is large organizations. This is more than 1,000 developers. So that's and, and this spread probably is also one of the reasons that we have a little bit like some weird numbers in the current benchmark. But uh, let's, let's go over them. The overall score that we see in SUM is 1.43. So 1.43 is not really that meaningful, but at least we have that now as a benchmark. Beware that underlying that 1.43, there's different security practices with different kinds of scores. And surprisingly, verification is on the, on the somewhat lower end, so it's 1.14. Um, Probably a lot of organizations that are implementing some are pushing this to the left, so putting more emphasis on uh, governance, design, implementation, obviously also on operations. That's the highest one, luckily. I would say if you, you'd have to do patching, incident response, and so on. So that's, that's the average scores we see. If we look at the top five security activities, and so we have a list of all the activities, and we see what, which are the ones that are being done the most, Incident response is the one that's, that's done the most. Security requirements is a surprising second, especially if later on we'll see at the testing of requirements, which is on low end. So everybody's doing security requirements, probably implementing ASVS, but not testing for it. But that's, that's another part. Environment management and security deployment are also not surprising. Security architecture is a, is a good fifth place. If you're looking at the bottom parts, then you see here requirements testing is really low. So that's a little bit surprising. Obviously, uh, these are averages, so we'll, uh, it's, it's hard to tell this without like going into more details, but this is like the first data set that we have. Uh, also, security testing is in the, in the bottom five security activities, which is a little bit surprising. Top 10 questions. Uh, so these are on an individual level, we also can gather uh, question-based information, not always, uh, but from the set data set that we have is, do the respond to detected incident is by far the, the highest one. Um, and then we have a couple of like, uh, okay, really logical questions, I would say. And the, top, and the bottom five, what you see here is, most of the cases, these are questions that are linked to level three maturity activities. So it's not really that big of a surprise. Overall, what we see is for organizations that they're act, like working really on level one, level two activities, level three is, is, a, is on the bottom part. So that's, a, that's the first sneak preview. We're going to release more details when we, once we have more data sets. We're really aiming for 100 data sets. So again, if you have information or if you have data sets, if you have any questions on this and you want to help us out, uh, do get in touch with us. Yes. Any questions on the benchmark? Yes. Yes. Of course, yes. But then you'd need to know who these five data sets came from. Yes. Yeah. Okay, any, uh, any other questions? All right. Okay, then we have a few more minutes uh, to give you some uh, information on all the resources that we're providing. Actually, uh, for us, the SAM project is there uh, to make sure that as much as possible all organizations over the world can use it, right? So what we try to do is we try to provide you with a core model that, um, that we think makes a lot of sense, and we try to provide as many resources around that as possible. Resources in terms of explication, in terms of guidance, in terms of tooling, and so on and so forth. Uh, there's a lot of open source resources. There's also some commercial uh, tooling around that and, and, and so on and so forth. But the information is there for the community to use. 
it would actually be nice to also get information back from the community in terms of data sets, but also in terms of, okay, how could I implement XYZ in a small company or in an agile development environment or in whatever context, because we can all help each other. And that's actually the goal of the OSM project, that we can all help each other and make the world a better place. Wouldn't that be nice? All right, let's look at the resources. Um, so we have, uh, um, we have uh, our community uh, that's actually uh, using and also driving to some extent uh, the, the model. For that, we have uh, monthly community calls where you can actually dial in. Uh, we have a community call in uh, US time zone. We also recently started a community call in EU time zone, which might be a, a bit more uh, uh, pleasant for people also in the, in the Europe region. Um, our main, uh, uh, main source is, of course, our website, uh, obaspsan.org, where you can find all the resources in, together with our GitHub and our Drive, our, our Google Drive, where you can find a lot of information. Uh, we have been providing trainings. We are also providing regular trainings on conferences, but these trainings are also open source. The decks are also available. Everything that we do is open source. So also for training information, if you would be interested, you can have a look at the, at the decks that are there. Uh, this is all there. We recently also started uh, making videos uh, around uh, by explaining uh, particular practices, particular uh, particular parts of the models, um, and we also started a, 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 book, a blog post, uh, sorry, an, a podcast where you actually do the, the similar explica explications. So from the project side, we really try to create as much as possible the outreach towards all of you to make sure that the model is as clear as possible for you to use. And there's a lot of resources around that. Um, assessment guidance, we have created, because typically in organization, a first step that you would do is to create a first assessment. Where am I as an organization? For that, we have created assessment uh, guidance that will explain you, okay, this is how you can actually use the model to, do, to perform your first assessment. And actually quite nice to see when you perform that first assessment, you will end up with some statistics, some nice graphs, and it will also already trigger some discussion in the organization. And that's actually an ideal starting point to trigger more discussion around AppSec and to think about, okay, where do we want to go? Uh, you, can, might, you might be creating some programs, some roadmap. OWASP SAM can also help you with that. But the assessment, the initial assessment, is a very good starting point in a company to do that. We've created some guidance around that, which is available. Um, um, what we have started a couple of years ago is to create guidance for every activity, but also if in a particular context. And if you're in a small company, very large company, financial sector company, or others, the idea is that we create as a community as much as possible all the guidance to help each other out. As a project team, we have created some initial guidance already, and our hope is really that the community contributes to this guidance overall. The guidance is also available on our website, and actually, you can, you can contribute to that. There's a way to actually uh, upload guidance with, that you think would be useful to share with others uh, in the model. So it's all open, uh, again, to help each other out. Um, we have... Uh, no, that's not... Uh, that's, that's just... Uh, that's the explanation on, on how, how the guidance is structured, and also how, if you have particular information, how you can upload it, how you can share it with the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, so uh, we also have uh, one of the companies that's sponsoring us also has been created uh, self-paced trainings. So these are trainings that you get videos that you can basically look at, uh, and they uh, explain um, explain different parts of the model. And rather than maybe reading documents, it might be more more user friendly to look at videos and to uh, to get explanations from there. That's also available. The links are also available uh, from from the website. Um, and then one of the things that we've also started creating is because we see a lot of companies that are actually using OWASP SAM. By the way, we're also in the works of translating the model from English towards different other languages because we do know that in, in particular countries, support for non-English uh, would be actually very useful. So that's on underway. We're working on that. Uh, um, uh, what you can also see uh, from our website is actually the pra our practitioners, so the people um, that are actually um, well using using SAM as a yeah, SAM as a as, as a way of uh, of implementing or, or improving uh, security in the organization. Companies that are using it uh, are also available uh, available on on our website just to get an ID on on 
how they can help you or, or you, can, you, you can talk to them uh, for more information if you want. Um, yes. And then, the, yep. yes, and then some of you have, have joined the, we, we regularly ask, organize some user days. So these are uh, uh, just a one day of, of uh, talks and workshops and roundtables and also organizations sharing their, uh, their some related experiences. Uh, we had one like the day before yesterday on Wednesday here um, with great, great attendance. Some of you were there. Um, we are repeating that also in San Francisco. So if you plan to also join us there or you have a colleague in your organization or you know of people that are interested in going there, please uh, uh, let them know. Uh, there, you can already register for it, and you also can, f I think it's on the next slide, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's, it's the previous one. Uh, you can also like submit a talk or submit a topic for, uh, uh, for the user day in San Francisco in September. And then, yeah, the ways to get in touch with us, the next slide is, uh, we have GitHub discussions. Uh, you can, I would highly recommend to also join us on the, the Slack uh, channel in the, in the Slack uh, Foundation uh, workspace um, mailing list. So we're going to share this presentation also online. If you want to receive a copy of that, scan the barcode or the QR code on the right and subscribe to our mailing list. We only send like from time to time content related updates. And then last but not least, to get invitations for the community calls, um, you need to register through Meetup uh, because we'll, uh, that way you'll receive the invitation and link to join the call. And I think that is what we wanted to share with you in this update. So we, ho we hope it was, uh, it was useful. We uh, would warmly welcome everybody to have a look. And if there's any questions or discussions that you want to have, Join, join our uh, user, user meetings, uh, and we're very happy to, uh, to, to support all of you. So thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you.